ever. I don't know. Again, I'm getting a fucking headache. I'm annoyed. Now I'm annoyed. The Church of Stern of Jesus is coming up. We have my sermon, Psalm 420, and more. You'll be able to call in your confessions. One three four seven four one four. We. That's enough of that. Is that a kazoo? I think it's a kazoo. One three four seven four one four. Uh, one three four seven four one four nine three three three. There you go. So distracted. Damn it. Later on, St. Peter's list. I don't even think I gave you the rundown. Of the rest of the show. St. Peter's list of new Thanksgiving side dishes. So he's gonna go get me some money, and then come back and do a stupid list. And then some odd news or whatever to wrap it up. Stoner Jesus show. Podcast recorded live on November 16th, 2015. We're in the chat room on sternjesus.net. We're also on Cannabis Radio on Spreaker.com and the Spreaker Radio app for your smartphones and your tablets. That's where we're doing it live. Of course, podcasts can be found, as I said, on Stitcher, Spreaker, stonerjesus.net, cannabisradio.com, iTunes, and iHeartRadio. Biatch! Stoner Jesus Show on CannabisRadio.com. Hey, Slow Rollers. When was the last time that you rolled a really beautiful joint? If you care about elegance, design, and a great smoking experience, it's time to start rolling with quality rolling papers from the Slow Roll Society. We specialize in the most beautiful and unique rolling papers from all over the world. Treat yourself or spoil your favorite stoner. Check us out online at slowrollsociety.com for products and prices and how to get 15% off your first order. Slow Roll Society. Stay classy. The Stoner Jesus Show is brought to you in part by Hemptations.com and PlanetEverywhere.com. they got a lot of awesome stuff for you to check out. But don't just take my word for it. Let Beach, the owner of Hemptations, tell you all about it. It's a very large selection of hemp goods. Everything from reusable coffee filters to frisbees, bandanas, everything planted everywhere on the site is made in Cincinnati, Ohio, made locally. We also have other retail products from our cosmetics, uh, earthly body products, bags on the retail site. You know, Again, uh, anybody local in Cincinnati can go to Hemptations.com and get the info on the store. Stores, Planet Everywhere is our dot com is our retail site. You can hit me up on Hemptation Beach or like my Facebook page, Hemptations or Hemptations Two. I'm on Twitter, Google, <laughs> I'm on the internet everywhere, just like everyone. Um, you know, we love to hear from people all over the world positive things about industrial hemp. That's what I do. That's what we do. Largest selection of industrial hemp on the planet in the stores. And I'd like to grow that inventory to be able to say that I haven't actually checked out all the other hemp retail spots to see if we have the largest amount on our planet everywhere but uh, it's a it's a fair it's a fair selection and as beach always says having temptations you're listening to the stoner jesus show not only can stoner jesus show podcast be found on stonerjesus.net you can also find them on cannabisradio.com you can also find the show by searching Stoner Jesus on Spreaker.com and the Spreaker Radio app. Also the Stitcher Radio app, iTunes, the iHeart Radio app, and iHeart.com. Do you want the links to all of these? Go to StonerJesus.net in the top menu bar. There's a page that says Listen to the Stoner Jesus Show. There you can find all the different ways you can listen to the Stoner Jesus Show podcast. All other information on the show can be found at stonerjesus.net. Great websites today need expert web design and development and need to be e-commerce ready and mobile friendly. But building a marketable and profitable website can be an uphill climb. Ready to make your new website or replace your existing website? Think Orange as the new way to get in the black. Orange Hill Development works with Fortune 500 companies and offer the same top quality development service at a fraction of what other providers charge. Brands like Absolute, Carlsberg, and Nestle trust Orange Hill Development. Find out why you should trust your website with Orange Hill. Contact Orange Hill for a consultation today at orangehilldevelopment.com. Gondrepreneur.com, your guide to the cannabis business world. 
Gondrepreneur.com is a comprehensive resource for cannabis professionals and entrepreneurs. Download the Gondrepreneur app on your smartphone or tablet to catch up on cannabis industry news, scroll through our daily job listings, and learn about successful cannabis companies, executives, and investors. Gondrepreneur.com, helping Gondrepreneurs grow. The following CannabisRadio.com program contains explicit language and content that can be considered graphic and offensive. This program is not suitable for all audiences, and the opinions expressed do not reflect those of CannabisRadio.com, its staff, management, or sponsors. Listener discretion is advised. Welcome back, everybody. Stern Jesus Show podcast. Recorded live on November 16th, 2015. Having problems with the main studio computer. That's getting on my nerves. Coming up, we got St. Pierre's list of new Thanksgiving side dishes. Thanksgiving's right around the corner, of course. These are important things you want to know. I guess. Now it's time. <laughs> Right now it is time for the Church of Stoner Jesus. There you go. Oh, organ music. I'm calling your confessions now. One three four seven four one four weed. One three four seven four one four nine three three three. We're also on Skype at Stoner Jesus One. That's Stoner Jesus and the number one. Coming up, we have the traditional reading of Psalm 420 by Stoner Schizo. Now, for my sermon. Sometimes, well, most of the times the sermons are something serious. Today is no exception. Joe Destruction joins us in the chat room on SternJesus.net. Terrorism. I understand. Stern Jesus, that's that's pretty fucking deep, man. We came here to laugh and smoke some weed and get away from shit. Well, fuck that. It's a sermon, bitch. It's supposed to be a downer. That's what sermons are. Terrorism. Of course, you all know. We talked about it as it was breaking on Friday night. The terrorist attacks in Paris... ISIS claim responsibility, 129 dead, so on and so forth. Of course, France is responding the same way all countries respond, at least nowadays, in this situation. They are dropping bombs on ISIS targets in the Middle East. Syria, Iraq, so on and so forth. Same way we reacted, we reacted after 9-11 and uh, continue to react to this day. We're still in I- or, or Afghanistan, we're still in Iraq. We're fighting ISIS. Now, the obvious question is what to do. Now, I'm not going to sit here and pretend like I have the answers because I don't. If I did, I'd probably be making more money than I do now. It's a dumb fucking podcast. <laughs> nah, this is serious. Stop it. Stop laughing. My <laughs> the revenue for the show is no laughing matter. Anyway, terrorism. What to do? I know. It's it's a it's a it's a, it's a perplexing problem. But there's a couple options, obviously. There's the options, as I said, that France is choosing, and America chose, and uh, most countries will choose. Dropping the bombs. Now, of course, on paper, dropping the bombs seems like the thing to do. It's really the thing you have to do, especially when your 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 constituents. You're the president of whatever country that just got uh, terrorists attacked. Your constituents demand action, so you gotta drop some bombs on some motherfuckers. The question, of course, becomes: Is that working? Has that worked so far? 
I don't know, I think an argument can be made that it has not worked. And believe me, this is coming from someone who was all for the dropping of the bombs. You know, I was uh, I was what you can be uh, probably considered a neocon even before 9-11. 9-11 pushed me full fucking tilt. I was all for, you know, the, the Afghanistan thing and the, the, the killing of the terrorists and invading Iraq and the whole fucking nine yards. Rah, rah, America. <clears throat> So this is coming from someone who was on that side of the fence. Fast forward almost 13 fucking years, we can see that it has not worked. The invasion of Iraq was pointless. It was a mistake. It has cost thousands, tens of thousands of American lives. It's cost millions of Iraqi lives. It has completely destroyed and devastated the infrastructure of their country and left a power vacuum that various terrorist elements have used to get their hands on gold and cash and weapons, namely ISIS, who's now replaced Al-Qaeda as the, the, uh, the, the world boogeyman, evil to be sure, Islamic, Islamist extremist, absolutely. Dirty, no good, evil fucking terrorists, yes. Do they deserve to die? Of course. If you're a member of ISIS and you want to destroy America, as an American, I say, kill them. Again, the question becomes, does that work? Probably not. But what choice do you really have? You're faced with a choice. You either kill people who are members of ISIS or you don't. Most people under the circumstances are going to say, you got to kill some motherfuckers. You know, there's things you got to do at home. To, uh, but in the end, there's not much you can do. It'd be very easy for someone to walk into the Mall of America in Minneapolis with a backpack bomb and let the motherfucker off and kill 50 people. There's not a whole lot we can do about it. We got, you know, we, we do the bombing and we got the torture and the intelligence and all that shit. And that's, you know, I guess helps some. But in the end, it's easy to say, and I would agree that what we've done since 9-11 in the Middle East has made the problem worse. But we're in the situation now. We've created the problem. The question becomes, does withdrawal from the Middle East solve the problem better than bombing? I don't know. I don't know the answer. I do know that if the president of France doesn't bomb the shit out of ISIS, they're going to throw him out of office. Same thing with George W. Bush after 9-11. If you think back, if he would have got on TV and said, you know what, these guys hit us, they're in Afghanistan, but we're not going to do anything about it. We're just going to chill here. No. It was, it was a political impossibility. They would have burned the White House to the ground until they could find someone to bomb the shit out of, out of Afghanistan. So what are we left with? It probably doesn't work, but we got to do it anyway. That's the hole we've dug. That's the shit we got to contend with now. It doesn't work, but we got to do it anyway because we have no other choice. The president of France has no other choice. He's got to kill some motherfuckers. And in the, in, the, in, in the interim, as he's killing the motherfuckers he needs to kill, a lot of people who are not the motherfuckers he needs to kill will be killed as well. Quote, unquote, collateral damage. So unlike most of my sermons, this really doesn't have any closure. This really doesn't have an ending. It's such an open-ended question. All we know for sure is how countries will react. This will put light of fire under the ass of the Western countries to pour more military hardware and people into the fight against ISIS. Now, if we defeat ISIS or kill a bunch of them, won't they just morph into something else? Probably so. Some other acronym or weird fucking Middle Eastern uh, Alibaba name that we can't we know nothing about. Maybe the next group will literally be the Alibabas. I don't know. The Alibaba terrorist organization. The ABTO. The dreaded ABTO, the Alibaba terrorist organization. I don't know. 
We got a fucking problem. I know that. And there's a certain group of Muslims 